We are back with Peter Schweitzer. This is the book. It's what we're talking about and one you will want to read. It's called Red Handed. And it's all about the explosive research that Peter has done. Uh, this is New York Times number one bestseller. As I said earlier, I know it just kills them that this book is really flying off the shelves. But we want to get back to our conversation with Peter. Kevin McCarthy very well may be the Speaker of the House yep. after the midterm elections. He has said that if he becomes Speaker, because then he'll control the agenda just like Nancy Pelosi has, that he will launch investigations into the origin of COVID, yep. uh, as well as uh, these deals that you talk about with Joe Biden and Hunter Biden, the millions of dollars that they have pocketed from that. Do you trust he'll do that? I hope he'll do that. I don't know Congressman McCarthy, um, so I want to take him at his word. Uh, but, you know, talk is cheap in Washington. Um, so the real test will be if he becomes speaker, yeah. if he takes action. I think the COVID investigation to me is particularly important. I mean, it's been now more than two years. Yeah. COVID's happened. In the House of Representatives, Nancy Pelosi has refused for there to even be a committee hearing on the origins of COVID. There's not been one committee hearing to even say, hey, maybe we should discuss to see where it came from. And honestly, I think one of the reasons, as I point out in the book, is she and her family uh, have strong financial ties in China. Her husband and son have both done deals there, and she's really pivoted. She used to be quite critical of Beijing on human rights. That has changed almost entirely. So if McCarthy comes in, I hope that those investigations happen, and he has the power with con some congressional committees to actually issue subpoenas. So how about we have subpoenas and have Hunter Biden and others actually testify under oath about exactly what's going on? Well, we sure had a bunch of those committees and subpoenas when Trump was there and Pelosi and Jerry Nadler and Eric Swalwell yep. and Adam Schiff and all those guys were all over everything, a lot of which was absolute noise. You mentioned Pelosi. Yeah. And you say that her family also has some uh, deals going on in China. Yes. Serious ones? Big ones? Yes. Um, so it's, it's interesting. In 1993, she visited China as a congresswoman, and she unfurled a banner on Tiananmen Square criticizing their human rights policy. That's pretty amazing. That's pretty bold. And I, yeah, yeah. I applaud her for that. Uh, the problem is, in the two, late 2000s, uh, her husband hooked up with a financial fund that 80% of their investments were in mainland China. He also was the co-owner of a couple limousine companies. Now, remember in 2008, Beijing had the Olympics. Nancy Pelosi wanted to boycott those Olympics. Her husband's limousine companies both got deals to ship VIPs around Beijing during the Olympics. And she literally changed her position to saying, I don't support a boycott anymore. Uh, and it's frankly been all downhill before. What she says now is, yes, they're committing genocide. Yes, there are massive human rights violations, but there are larger issues to worry about, and we shouldn't bring them up and let it interfere. It's outrageous. What's, what's larger than murdering an entire bunch of people? I don't know. That's a great question. That's a great question. We should ask her that. And, and, she, and the Olympics, she actually was talking about uh, saying the athletes ought to go, but not say anything. Don't rock the boat. I mean, I'm thinking we ought to be rocking some boats in China right now. Absolutely. Look, it's, it's, this is, a, I think, the beauty of what Ronald Reagan did when he was president. We were locked in a Cold War with the Soviet Union. As Reagan always said, our enemy is not the Russian people. It's this Soviet government and dictatorship. Yeah. It's the same thing. The biggest victims of Chinese communism are the Chinese people. So our enemy, and I'll use that word, is the Chinese Communist Party, which has this agenda, which is repressing its people. The Chinese people are, I think, ultimately going to be our best allies uh, if we decide to effectively challenge the Chinese government, its legitimacy, which is something we should do. Peter, a lot of the big American corporations, they're not stupid. They know that there are significant human rights violations. There's slave labor, there's child labor, yeah. exploitation, but they continue to do business there. Why is it that they just look the other way? Is the dollar that powerful to them? I think it is. Uh, I think also some of these leaders have a, a certain attraction. They talk about the efficiency of the Chinese government. Well, of course, dictatorships are very efficient. There's an appeal that they have, and it goes further than just doing business there. As I point out in the book, uh, Google, Microsoft, 
They both sponsor, with money and technical advice, sponsor research in China into artificial intelligence, which is sort of vital to this mm -hmm. tech competition. It has military application. The laboratories they are funding are known to be co connected to the Chinese military. So we have a situation where some of America's great companies, richest companies, are actually subsidizing the Chinese military in their race against us. At the same time, you had Google employees saying, we don't want to do any work with the uh, Pentagon because it goes against our moral concerns. I mean, that's insane. It it's is like insane. American taxpayers and American consumers who are making these com companies, multinational American yep. companies, wealthy. Yep. They take the wealth and then they use it basically to betray the U.S. and the very people that made them rich in the first place. And betrayal is, I think, exactly the right word. And you have a situation where Bill Gates of Microsoft is uh, advising the Chinese government on science and technology matters. He's invested in a company called BYD, which is building, among other things, missile guidance technology. And guess where those missiles are going to be aimed? Uh, you have uh, other situations involving uh, Mark Zuckerberg and the investments. He's the founder of Facebook, of course, investments he's made. They all are recklessly engaging in commerce with China. These are smart people. They know what they're doing. The problem is, Governor, they just don't seem to care. They're more concerned about their business and about their money. I'm going to just say to our audience, uh, get the book, read it. And if you can find that Peter has misrepresented if he's been dishonest, if his facts aren't right, let us know. Because I have read some of Peter's works. I, I, I'm just amazed at the level at which he documents what he says. So if you want to learn more about Peter Schweitzer and how to get the book red-handed, as well as the rest of his hard-hitting books, if you go to our website, Huckabee.tv, we have a direct link to the way to get the book and all of the things that Peter is doing. Do it for your country's sake.